We start with new details tonight after a Fayetteville Boys and Girls Club employee was arrested. Yeah, the realtor that is listing the house, Misty Barnes, you see her there on that sign. She tells me that it was a real estate agent from a different company that set up this morning's appointment. And police say when that client got here this morning, she pulled out a gun instead of her checkbook. Take a look behind me. This just about an hour ago looked like a normal farm, and you can see all of the damage here. One of the largest theaters in Northwest Arkansas taking extra security precautions to make sure that it does not happen here. KNWA's Tevin Wooten is live at Malco Theater with more. Tevin. Well, authorities in Northwest Arkansas warning residents of an escaped inmate. But I want to show you, this is the, the shed that we're, we're told was uh, torn apart in that storm. When the War Eagle Bridge was built in 1908, it was just pedestrians and horse and bug gates crossing over. But now the times have changed. The county wants to make sure that this bridge can sustain vehicle traffic for years to come. Once we got here, there was already a packed parking lot. And you can see there's a lot of cars driving through. You can see all the people that are lining, waiting for those fireworks at 925. This next story, we have been very interested in this <laughs> we, we have, we a, have. We a really Northwest have. Arkansas man goes fishing on Lake Bentonville, and he catches a scary-looking fish. Take a look. And they are making me work for my dinner tonight. We've got the spaghetti right here. It's not just the rides and the games that are bringing people out here, but the famous spaghetti dinner. Before a client can walk into the home, the realtor will snap a picture on their Agent Guard app. Yeah, hey Christina, it is mayhem here at Grubbs in Fayetteville, and a lot of the fans are totally unfamiliar with the walk with carriers until today. A former employee and mother of a student at the school wants to be named only as Amber. She says that Justin and Marsha Harris would often try to pray the demons out of misbehaving students. If they got in too much trouble, they would pray on the kids, do a circle around them, put their hand on their heads, saying, trying to rebuke demons. Amber was an employee at Growing God's Kingdom for about five months in 2013. She says Justin Harris fired her after a difference in opinion on how to discipline students. Though she says she learned a lot about the Harris family during that five months. How did you learn about the fact that they were praying the demons out of kids? Well, I had another teacher there that uh, had me take a child down to the office. And whenever I did, they did it right there in front of me. Amber says she met the two youngest adopted girls while teaching at the preschool. They're adorable. And I never seen too many issues with them. So Marcia spoke to you though about saying that she believed both of those girls had demons. Yes. Despite being fired and questioning some of the Harris's behavior, Amber's three-year-old son remained a student at Growing God's Kingdom until Wednesday. All this going on, I think it's too much for him right now. I just don't feel comfortable with him being there. Okay, I'm Lauren. Okay. I, just I headed to the preschool to find out if other parents had concerns. I do have a quick question for you. You're on private property. I need you to move off into the public area. Are there any parents that are... No, you need to go. But I was shut down quickly by an employee at the door. Many parents I tried to speak with wouldn't stop, but one says he and his wife are happy with the school. It's great for preschool. They teach them about the Bible and stuff like that, too, which I think is really important. While Amber is one of a few parents removing their kids from the school, many I spoke with say that they don't believe the controversy with the Harris family affects the preschool. I'm Lauren Conley for KNWA Northwest Arkansas News. Nearly five hours after wandering from his home, Nathan McMichael back in the arms of a friend. As we were walking down, and uh, we were just about 700 yards from here, and uh, Mr. Hungek happened to look back, and there he was. Leslie Ramey, a friend of three-year-old Nathan's family, says he got a text message that Nathan was missing and joined the search efforts. I really wanted to find him. That was my main objective, was to not, not leave here without finding him. According to the Washington County Sheriff's Office, it's likely that Nathan crawled through the family's doggy door and wandered off, traveling nearly a half mile before he was found in the woods off of County Road 108. 
He's scared. He's cold. I think he's under temperature right now. Ramey says the first thing Nathan said when they were reunited is that he wants his mom. I told him, we'll get you to your mama. That's my main objective. I know his mama, I know the family, and I know they were worried sick. So, I mean, it was just a godsend that we found him. I'm Lauren Conley for KNWA Northwest Arkansas News. Marisol Soto, once arrested as an undocumented immigrant, is now a refugee of the United States. But she says this campaign is about any person struggling to make America their home. Well, that picture pretty much describes him. He's always working Monday through Saturday. Marisol Soto and her family came to the United States from Mexico in 2001 looking for a better life. He says he did. Um, he found a better lifestyle, not only economically, but in general. The family of four reflects on happy memories. I loved it. And all I wanted to do was just keep on feeling and making snowmans. But after high school, Marisol returned to Mexico for nursing school. I went through a series of events from being targeted by a drug cartel um, to almost being raped a couple times. In 2011, she came back to the U.S. seeking asylum, but ended up in a maximum security jail in San Diego, California for two months before she was granted asylum. I am completely frozen. I'm not allowed to drive. I'm not allowed to work. The United States needs us because it has been an immigrant country since the beginning. So she set to work with Irvin Camacho and Andrew Johnson to create an awareness campaign called Undocu Money. My blood is immigrant blood, so I've seen the struggles of, of friends of mine, of family members. Undocu Money. We want people to know that undocumented people do contribute to this economy. And, and as the trio launches this new campaign, Marisol's parents say they couldn't be more proud. Y esperamos que sea para bien. Mm. They say they just want to tell you that they're very proud of what I'm doing and that they support me 100% and they hope that this brings good to the world. And to learn more about the Undocumenty campaign and their call to action or just to see the video in its entirety, you can head over to our website. That's nwahomepage.com. I'm Lauren Conley for Fox 24 News.